when it comes to cellular modems, there's a lot of factors that will impact your performance and coverage. So what makes this hotspot a better performer than this one? It's not about the size. We'll let you know what is though. Hi there, I'm Cherie. And I'm Chris. And we're with the Mobile Internet Resource Center. And today we're going to talk about hotspots, modems, ways to get on to a cell network with a data device and kind of the range of technology that exists. So there are a lot of considerations when picking out your idea cellular hotspot or router. It can come down to battery life, what ports they have, the form factor, um, how many devices can connect to them. There's a lot of considerations with it. In this video we're going to be focusing on the modem specifications and kind of explaining what they mean and how they can impact your actual performance. Yeah. So the modem is the little chipsets, the integrated components that communicate between the device and the cell network. It is the modulator demodulator just like modems back in the old dial-up days. It's what interfaces with the digital world of the hotspot and the analog world of radio airwaves. So we're going to dive into some of the key features and what differentiates each of the modems in these different cellular devices so that you can make more informed choices. What makes this flagship so much more valuable and more advanced than, well, this still being sold, but <laughs> technically a dinosaur. <laughs> All right, so while we're going to be focusing and using Verizon hotspots as kind of an example, this applies to all cellular embedded modems. These could be ones that are inside your smartphone, they could be inside routers or hotspots. So this information will apply to everything, but we're also going to give you some tips on what makes one Verizon hotspot better than another. So one of the first things to consider when you're evaluating LTE modems for their raw potential is something known as the LTE modem category. And that starts, well, the first generation of LTE devices were category three devices, and we've got a couple examples here. Then category four is a significant step up, but the big jump came with category six, added a few features like carry aggregation, which we'll explain in just a minute. Uh, category nine it took it to the next level, and then we're actually getting to devices that are pushing towards what's known as gigabit LTE. Uh, some of them are category 18, such like that. Once you're above category nine, the numbers start to get a little vague, but the bigger the number, the more raw potential you have in your device, and the difference between a category 18 device and a category three is huge. So when you're comparing and just trying to decide what is potential with the technology, that is the quick reference way to understand it. Now we'll explain some of the key features that were enabled with each of these jumps and why they matter and um, just some of the raw benefits you might see. But quick reference, category three, not so good. Category 18 or gigabit LTE, something labeled like that, much more advanced technology. It's also come uh, attached with kind of a raw peak theoretical speed. This is what you'd see in a lab with no other people on a cell tower, with no other radio interference around. Category three devices had a peak theoretical speed of 100 megabits per second. Category four, 150. Um, category six doubled that to 300. Category nine, 450. And then, well, like a category 18 device, this is pushing over a gigabit per second theoretical speed. You won't see that, but you can actually definitely see the differences, relative differences. It's been a 10x jump between category 3 and category 18. Let's still stay kind of simple here and not go into the weeds with the technical yet. The other differentiating factor between different modems is the frequency bands that they can connect to. Now each carrier broadcasts over different bands. Think of these like old TV channels or radio stations. You have to tune in to a different band to be able to get that transmission. It's kind of similar in cellular and they range from short range technology to very long range technology. So the frequencies that you'll get in like in a city might be very different than what you get when you're out in the boonies. And that can make a difference to us travelers who are going all over the place and need a lot of versatility. And what you'll find is that in uh, more basic modems, they don't support as many frequency bands as when you get up into the higher end modems. So for instance, 
Verizon, since we're using Verizon as an example here, the frequency bands that they currently are broadcasting over include 2, 4, 5, 13, 46, and 66. But the two primary ones that they broadcast over are 4 and 13. 13 is their long range band, and that one is probably the most critical one for a lot of us travelers, but a lot of their new spectrum that they're putting out there now are over some of the newer bands. So having a modem that supports the newer bands gives you more future proofing and gives you more options for getting online because you'll get different coverage than you will. So as an example, this ellipsis, which is Verizon's base hotspot that they sell with a lot of their prepaid plans, only covers frequency bands 4 and 13. It's going to be fine for basic Verizon coverage. You're going to get most of their coverage map with it, but you will be missing out on some of the other coverage, whereas their new flagship 8800L supports all of the frequency bands plus a handful of others that support international frequency bands that are used in other countries. So the 8800L is going to get you more coverage options as you travel and give you that global support. Now, one of the most interesting and exciting LTE technologies is known as carrier aggregation. And this actually takes those um, LTE bands that Shri was mentioning and allows the modem to combine and connect to multiple channels at once. Now, older Category 3 modems can't do this at all. Only a few Category 4 modems can, but the more advanced devices, like a Category 6 modem, a lot of its speed potential comes from being able to connect to two bands at once, potentially doubling its speeds. Category 9 can potentially do three bands at once. And well, it gets kind of crazy when you get up to gigabit LTE devices. They can connect to multiple channels at once, combining that speed. So that is carrier aggregation. It is a really great feature. It does depend, it is dependent on the cell tower you're connecting to supporting those bands. So you won't get this all the time. And well, it happens behind the scenes. So you don't even know what's actually going on. But it is one of the things that allows a more modern hotspot to completely blow something older out of the water if you're in a tower, on a tower that has those newer bands enabled. All right, another defining feature between different modems is a core LTE technology that we call MIMO. That stands for multiple in, multiple out. And I'm gonna use one of these higher end routers as an example, because you, you can actually see the antennas coming out of them. Now, two of them are Wi-Fi antennas that's used for broadcasting the Wi-Fi signal. But two of these are cellular antennas. And basically, every LTE device out there has at least two antennas in them. And these sorts of devices, they're built in internally, same as with your smartphones and tablets. They're inside the devices. And what two antennas or more allow you to do is the device can pick up more signal because signals are all over the place. We can't see them, but they're super tiny. And the different antennas allow them to be picked up differently. And then the modem inside then can take those two or more signals and do more with them. That can in, give increased coverage and give increased power and speed because the antennas are combined inside and your device can do more with it. Now, every LTE device has at least two. So even these basic category three and uh, modems have two antennas inside of them. It is a core way that LTE works. But as we're getting into the more flagship and more modern devices that are coming out, like this 8800L hotspot, this one actually has four antennas inside of it. So it has even more raw potential to be able to do more with the signal that it is receiving and giving you such faster speeds. So paying attention to how many MIMO antennas are inside the device is a critical factor in selecting your modem, as well as the options for selecting, putting in external antennas to optimize that capacity as well. So all that techno babble to really get down to the roots of this, how does this actually impact the performance that you might potentially see in these different hotspots? So all three of these are still currently for sale on Verizon. This is the, the Verizon's hotspot offerings, ranging from this low-end ellipsis, which is 99 bucks, 
the 7730, which has been out for about a year and a half as the time we record this, and the brand new 8800, which has uh, just been out, well, since October. Since October. So, the Ellipsis is a Category 3, the 7730 is a Category 9, and the 8800 is in Category 18. It's a huge technological advance. Now, we took some readings at this exact location. We're in Sanford, Florida right now. It's a fairly urban area. Um, we're not using any signal enhancing, so no external antennas, no cellular boosters, and we just took some core readings, put them all in the same location, and did a speed test with a, a smartphone connected over their Wi-Fi at the same distance. So that we tried to rule out any other factors that could impact your performance. Here are the speeds that we got. And this is just a snapshot of one location. Right. It's no indicator of the speeds that you might get at your location. Right. The ellipsis, we got 6.3 megabit per second down and 13.7 up. Those aren't bad speeds. Those are very usable. You're going to be able to do HD video streaming over that. You're going to be able to yeah. surf. It's going to feel just fine. But you're actually kind of seeing, seeing, seeing uploads faster than downloads indicates that, well, the download bands are probably a little bit saturated and the ellipsis has less opportunity to find other unsaturated bands because it can only connect to one band at a time. And it can only find band 4 and 13, whereas the other devices have the opportunity to connect to other bands that Verizon might have in the area that might be less saturated. Mm -hmm. So when we move up to the 7730, which is the one that came out in January 2017, it's a Category 9 device. The speeds we saw there were 19.4 down and 15.3 up. So almost triple the download speeds. By having that carrier aggregation, yes. as well as access to other bands, and also some of the more raw potential of the modem and its upgrade. Yeah, much more advanced internally, and you'll see that sort of relative difference in a lot of places because, well, Verizon's network has been upgraded to basically match this and all anywhere you might go. So the 7730 versus the Ellipsis, you're also going to get more coverage options because it covers more frequency bands. So mm -hmm. as you move around locations, it's just going to give you more options to get online. And we move up to the 8800L, the new flagship one that just came out in October 2018. Speeds on that one, you want to do yeah, the drum roll? Yeah, so it, again, <laughs> it's, uh, uh, we got 39.9 uh, megabits per second down and 20.9 megabits per second up. Not super spectacular. We've actually in other places seen speeds over 100 megabits per second and actually the first time we ever saw an upload over 50. But again, right here in this exact location, it outperformed these other two. Good thing, because yep. we kind of expected that. <laughs> so we're getting almost double the download speed on the 8800 versus the 7730. And, well, let's see, I have to do some quick math here. <laughs> Tremendously faster <laughs> than the, the ellipsis. ellipsis. And uh, that right there, if performance is what you are looking for and you want the fastest speeds and the most coverage, means that keeping your modems updated does have a huge advantage, especially for us mobile folks who are trying to always optimize our solutions on the road. Yeah. And then another thing is, um, it all depends on what's on the other side of the connection as well, how upgraded the tower has, has been. So something like this has got a lot of technology in it that most places Verizon towers aren't even enabling or tapping into yet. So the more advanced your modem, the more future-proof it is. So this will keep getting better as more technologies roll out on the tower side. This will actually still have a little bit of room to keep getting better. This is probably pretty much all tapped out already. But if cost is one of your main considerations, you can pick up an Ellipsis and own it for $49 at some third-party retailers. We got this one at Best Buy. And if you're in a fairly urban area where you can tap in to Verizon's two uh, most common bands. An urban area without congestion. So you've got to kind of... Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're it's going to perform just fine in mm. a lot of locations, but you won't know what you're missing unless you're comparing it directly to what one of its higher-end brothers yep. and sisters. So there we go. This, hopefully this gives a nice little snapshot and summary of what kind of difference, you know, two devices, the, the clerk in the store might just point you to this one, but something like this might be worth the extra money, particularly for the future proofing. And then keep in mind, everything we just shared here doesn't just apply to these hotspots. We're just using them as an example. This applies to the modems that are inside of embedded routers, including something like the MoFi, the PepWave, the Cradle Point, 
the modems inside of your smartphone, mm -hmm. as well as the modems that you might find in some of the new roof mounted or embedded options that are coming in RVs and cars, mm -hmm. like uh, the wine guard that's on your that you can get that a lot of RV manufacturers are now installing and coming in is the modems are actually more on this line. Right. And they are on these. In integrated devices tend to be on the trailing end of technology as opposed to the leading edge. And definitely keep that in mind, particularly if you're investing in something that is going to be built into your RV where it's going to be there for years and years and years, probably not have an upgrade option. Well, you might be tying yourself to the, the, the back end of the train. So it can be worthwhile on those is keeping in mind, shop for manufacturers that are actually investing in at least a base level LTE modem that supports that carrier aggregation for the most future-proofing. Yes. That's probably the best that most of them are going to be offering for now. Yes. Category 6 on up is probably a good place to start. And I don't think most of them are offering that <laughs> no, yet. No, most of them still aren't. <laughs> All um, right, that's a look at modem specifications. Hopefully we didn't over-geek on you. Uh, check out the guide that goes along with this video. You can find it at rvmobileinternet.com slash LTE hyphen modems right there. And we go a lot deeper and keep that updated with any other changes as this stuff constantly evolves. Videos like this would not be possible without the support of our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. We don't get funding from advertising, sponsorships. We don't sell any of this gear. We like to keep unbiased so that we can educate our RVing and cruising communities on the options. And we get all of that support from our membership fees. We love giving out free content like this. Our members got access to this video first exclusively as they do many of our videos. So if this is the sort of content that you are appreciating and learning from, do give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to go further with our content, you might want to consider becoming a member. <music>